Hi, I'm Gina and I'm the AmeriCorps Education Assistant here at Pontchartrain Conservancy. In this interactive video, we're going to be talking about coastal land loss. And to do that, we're in a coastal wetland. So coastal land loss refers to the increasing rate at which we're losing land, especially here in Louisiana. So on this map, you can see in red all of the locations in Louisiana that we're going to be losing over the next 50 years. So what we want you to do is take the next few minutes to pause and think about the potential causes of coastal land loss. And what you're going to do is make a mind map. So for more information on how to make your own mind map, go ahead and review our additional materials on our website. But essentially, we're going to have you put coastal land loss in the middle of your mind map and then surround it with all of the potential causes, anything that you think might be a reason that we're losing land here. And then we'll come back after about 10 minutes. And we're going to talk about some of the causes of land loss here in Louisiana. Welcome back. We hope you had fun making your mind maps. Next, we're going to talk about some causes of coastal land loss. And if you included any of these, great. If there's any in here that you'd like to add to your mind map, please feel free to do so. And if you want to learn anything else about these causes of coastal land loss, please visit our supplementary resources on our website. So first, we're going to talk about oil spills. An example of this, especially in the Gulf Coast, is the BP oil spill, which damaged a lot of the plants and animals in the wetlands. Next, we have sea level rise, which is a global threat to coastal land all over the world. Oil canals are the canals left by the oil industry that have left wetlands segmented and susceptible to saltwater intrusion. Next, we have invasive species like nutria, which eat a lot of the grasses in the wetlands and make them susceptible to erosion. Next, we have levees, which interrupt deltaic processes. And last, we have hurricanes, which cause a lot of damage to the land and the wetlands by interrupting trees and causing a fair amount of erosion. So up next, we're gonna actually model some erosion uh, using our small wetland kits, and we're gonna make some predictions about what's gonna happen with them. So now that we've talked a little bit about the causes of coastal land loss, we're gonna run a little experiment to see how different shorelines react to water and the flow of water. So if you would like to do this experiment along with us, you can find the materials and the instructions on our website. But let's take a look at the models that we have in front of us here. So up first, we have a shoreline with vegetation and soil. Model number two is a shoreline with just soil. And model number three is a shoreline with soil and rocks. So in just a moment, we're going to pour water over each of these to facilitate the flow of water, which may or may not cause erosion for the different models. We want you to take a few minutes to pause and think about how much erosion might occur, where the sediment might go, and what the water might look like at the bottom of each of these containers. So we'll see you in just a few minutes and we're going to test our models. So now that you've made your predictions, we're gonna test the experiment. So we're gonna start from left to right, starting with our model with vegetation and soil, to our model with only soil, and lastly, our model with soil and rocks. So let's see what happens. So now that we've conducted our experiment, we're going to go through and make some observations about each of our shorelines and how they reacted to the flow of water. So first, if we look at our model with vegetation and soil, we'll see that a little bit of water is discolored. Some of the soil did get through, 
and some of it was eroded, but for the most part, the vegetation held onto it and mitigated the effects of erosion. Up next, we have our example with only soil, and you'll see that in this one, a lot more soil got through, and that's because there's nothing holding it together. And last, we have our rocks and soil in our third shoreline, and you'll see that the water is not as dark as the soil only model, but is a fair bit darker than the model with vegetation. And if you ran the experiment yourself, your results might be a little bit different from ours, but for the most part, this is how it happens in nature as well. Vegetation does a great job of holding soil in place, and soil by itself is pretty loose and can be moved around pretty easily. So take a few minutes and look at our models and how they reacted to the flow of water, and compare your predictions to our observations. How are they the same, and how are they different? And when you come back, we'll talk a little bit about mitigation strategies and how we restore and protect our wetlands. Welcome back. So, how do we control the erosion like we saw in our experiment? Well, next we're going to talk about some real life mitigation strategies that are being used to control erosion and coastal land loss in Louisiana. Up first, we have barrier island restoration. Barrier islands are very important as one of the early lines of defense against hurricanes and the effects they can have. Then we have shoreline stabilization and protection. So shoreline protection uses both natural and human-made sources. Some of the natural sources would be uh, used in living shorelines, whereas the human-made ones would be more like riprap using rocks, which we modeled in our experiment. And then we have ridge restoration. Now ridges are a natural feature of elevated land that help to prevent against the water that surges up during storms. Then we have sediment diversions, which attempt to mimic natural deltaic processes by introducing sediment from one body of water into another. And last we have marsh restoration, which is a type of wetland restoration that works by adding plants and vegetation to wetlands so that they can help hold that soil together and prevent erosion, just like we saw in our experiment. If you'd like to learn more about these materials, you can check out our website for our supplementary materials, but to hear about a real life uh, wetland restoration project. Next, we're going to hear from Shelby Barrett, one of our coastal scientists. I'm Shelby Barrett with the Pontchartrain Conservancy. Um, I'm a coastal scientist in our Coast and Community Program. The area that we're planting at today is near the Carnarvon Freshwater Diversion, about 15 river miles southeast of the city of New Orleans. Um, historically, it was a freshwater marsh, but in the past, due to saltwater intrusion, there was a lot of conversion to open water and loss of that freshwater habitat. Um, but since the closure of the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet, it's become fresh enough again to support woody vegetation, such as the cypress trees that we're planting here today. Um, so these trees are approximately two years old. Um, I'm five feet, so they're a little less than five feet tall. And so every tree that gets planted uh, gets this nice little um, nutrient protector or herbivory protector because there's lots of little things that like to eat little trees out here. One important thing to remember is that young trees face a lot of challenges um, to being successful in becoming mature trees. Um, hydrologic modification, saltwater intrusion, herbivory from nutria and deer and hogs and other species that like to eat young trees. Um, and that these trees would not physically be here if we were not planting them out here. Um, and cypress trees can live as long as 2,000 years. It's so cool to think about that we're planting these trees and, and one day like my great grandkids might come out here and be able to see them. And so wetland plants have really extensive root systems that hold, that hold the ground together. Um, and cypress trees are really great at that. They have really great extensive root systems. Um, and cypress trees particularly are very specific about where they choose to grow. So a young cypress tree, once the seed germinates, faces a lot of obstacles to becoming an adult. It has to be flooded at the right time of year and it has to be flooded for the right length of time, so not too long and, and not too short for it to become a little seedling. And once that seedling sprouts, it's got to worry about predators. So rabbits, nutria, feral hogs, deer, all like to eat young trees. Ponte Train Conservancy has been planting in Carnarvon since 2010. And since then we've planted approximately 40,000 young bald cypress trees. Uh, we don't just plant those trees, we also monitor some of these trees to see how they're doing over time. So we measure their height, how tall they are, and their diameter at breast height, which is how big around they are. Um, and so, and we also see whether or not they've survived, and we have an, about an 83% survival rate. So for 
every 100 trees that we plant, 83% of those trees survive. Projects like these are happening all over coastal Louisiana. Some of our partners plant grasses, some of them plant cypress trees as well and other species of trees. They do dune plantings on the barrier islands, which are our first line of defense against hurricanes and storm surge. Um, so being involved in any of that work is really the, the biggest thing that you can do because it, it's so expensive and so time consuming. Um, and, and these plants really would not be here if we were not planting them there because of the hydrologic modifications that we've made to coastal Louisiana. So now that you've learned about coastal land loss and its causes and mitigation strategies that are working against it, our challenge for you is to design your own restoration project. Please visit our website for more information on how to design your own project. And please send us your mind maps at education at scienceforourcoast.org. Please take our survey at the end of this video. And thanks for coming to spend time with us today. We hope you learned a lot about coastal land loss and what we can do to prevent it.